Hello everybody and welcome to the second part of this tutorial where we are making this image you can see on the desktop. Uh, from the first part we have already prepared the scene. Uh, we have all the uh, objects on their places. We just need to put their camera. So let's do it. Let's place camera there. Uh, place it somewhere so it will make some decent composition. Uh, you can just lock the camera to view. I'll start the screen card cast keys to put it somewhere like this it should be pretty good well don't forget to unlock the camera so you will not accidentally move it somewhere and let's just set the lighting go to render and render it view and first of all we don't want to see the volume we want to see the spheres itself. Uh, now it's just uh, li lighted by the world, uh, but it's just one color and it, it would be nice to have some variations. So I will go here and check it uh, environment texture. Uh, you can pick uh, even some JPEG, but best is all, of course to some uh, HDR image. I use for example this one. Uh, it will give you the variations of the light and it doesn't really matter what image you will pick because uh, the film will be set to transparent. Uh, we will pick another background so it uh, won't be seen in the final render. Uh, if you are using a, a HDR for lighting your scene it's always uh, best to not change the strength of the world from the one. Uh, if you are think it's uh, dim, it's uh, dark just uh, pull up the exposure something bigger and it will compensate for it well now we can jump to uh, to the making of the material itself uh, i will just set it somehow differently here i will have the viewer and here note editor okay and here i will see the scene. Uh, I want for this to have gradient from the center to the uh, edge of this uh, volume uh, but uh, I don't want the gradient texture. Uh, if some uh, sphere will be uh, have some color for example this yellow I want this yellow on each side of this sphere so the individual spheres have each own color not just the gradient from the center uh, outside. Uh, for this I need to know the distance from the center to the sphere itself. Uh, for calculating this distance uh, if I have this scene set up like uh, this uh, so everything is in the uh, world center in the world origin I just place new material uh, go to the input object info and now here I have location, I just uh, calculate the size of this vector and it will be my distance. But if I want to uh, move the volume, the volume object around, uh, I need to calculate the distance not to the or origin, but to the location of the volume. But now I don't have any way to get the location of the volume from here from this note editor. Uh, one way is to uh, use drivers but it's uh, actually really badly uh, the, the making of the drivers is uh, confusing, uh, unnecessarily uh, complicated. Just I would like to avoid them uh, so I will show you how to use uh, add-on named uh, animation nodes which uh, give us ability to address pretty much any value in Blender and it's uh, in Node Editor so I just like it. Uh, I put in the description the link where you can uh, download the animation nodes. Uh, when you download and install them uh, here you will have another uh, tab for the Node Editor. Uh, I just want to see both so I will go there and what I am trying to do right now here in the top I have note editor for the material, in the bottom is note editor for the animation nodes. Uh, I 
need to calculate the distance uh, or the size of this vector of this location but for it to be location from the center of volume not from the center of the origin i need to go there uh, converter vector math and subtract this location from the location or uh, here i have to put location of the volume uh, object and i don't have it anywhere in this uh, node editor so i need to uh, pick some name for this node this uh, node is named vector math i will uh, rename it for uh, subtraction and now i need to find this little uh, point this blue point and put the location of the volume there and i will do it in the note editor uh, here in the animation notes so just make new note tree uh, here you can set when it's executed when it does what it does. Uh, I definitely don't want it to um, do it always, just when it's something is changed. Uh, and here I will just need two nodes. First node is object transforms input. So it will give me, I will pick some object, the volume. So here I will just select it and click on this little a dropper and it will pick the object so here i have location of this object rotation scale i can do whatever i want with those informations and what i want is to plug them uh, plug them to this node so i will just need to find this node again in this uh, node tree place here material cycles material output here I will pick the material, I have only one, the material, this is this one, and some node that is inside of this material, and I named it subtraction, so this is this node, every other node has different name, so this node is subtraction, I will pick it, subtraction, and it has two inputs, vector, and the second one, it's named vector 001, so this is the here. So now, this blue dot, is actually for Blender this blue dot. So now if I plug this location here, uh, it's unfortunate that I, you cannot see it there, that it's plugged here, but for the Blender inside actually is. So right now this vector is not calculated the location from the origin, but from the location of this volume. I hope it makes sense. The calculation of the actual size of the vector it's pretty straightforward math uh, unfortunately there isn't note for it or at least i didn't find it but it's really easy just separate the vector to its components uh, x y and z all components uh, need to be powered uh, uh, what am i doing converter math uh, power at 2 power of 2 so it's squared it's classical pythagorean theorem uh, all three then you have to add it together uh, add add everything together and do a square root of it square root is power of half so 0.5 uh, to keep it somehow clean i will just make group of this and put this out so this gray dot is now uh, the distance from the center so now i can put it to the color of this diffuse node now I should see that it's dark inside and light outside. Uh, I will run it through the color ramp where I pick some colors. So the left is the center of the sphere, right is the edge. So in the center it will be 
bright yellow then it could be orange for example or some reddish color and the last one will be oh no 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 not another but this will be some kind of blue well I think yes this looks good to me uh, also uh, it will be nice to have some variations and uh, we can add them with import uh, object info again and he is here is a random value so I will just go color mix RGB and mix this multiply with the random value so it it's not really that obvious but each uh, each sphere has a different value of the color and also that there will be uh, nice to have some reflections from the environment map so I will just add shader mix and shader glossy uh, I will use uh, backman uh, backman is I believe uh, the di dielectric materials and mix it with Fresnel because why not it make it makes it somehow more realistic uh, also uh, as you can see in the final image it's glowing actually from the center so I will add there shader add shader and emission the color of the emission will be same as the color of the spheres but the strength will be driven also with the distance from the center uh, now it's inverted we will solve it with converter color ramp again and set these values as you please well now I somehow don't like these colors it's just personal preference well why not It could be something like this uh, you can play with it as you wish okay it will be strength now we just add the little bit of more realism with the camera and depth of field so just go to the camera settings uh, focus on the volume so the center of the object and because this object is actually pretty huge is two meters of diameter so set the f-stop something little, very little, 0.3. So you get the, the focus here. Uh, it kind of, it's kind of weird, this color scheme. I am still not really fond of it. I will probably get rid of the pink part, but whatever. Uh, and now we will just render this so set the render uh, keep the film transparent so we will uh, you can uh, change the background later so now I will just hit the render button okay we are finished uh, I think it's pretty nice result I will just add some composition to it so go back uh, no not here to the render result in the image editor so I will see what's happening and here in node editor I will go to the composition tab use nodes where they are here and put lens distortion there it's always pretty nice effect on this uh, artistic images so uh, distort lens distortion 
but always use very little value here if you go too much and the effect is too visible it can be uh, intentional it can be artistic uh, whatever but i like really small values that you are actually don't really know that it's there and also i will put the background here so just add an input image uh, background uh, I, I'll, uh, I just went to google go for gradient and choose the images that uh, have license uh, licenses that you are uh, able to use them again so it's something like creative commons or something similar and use uh, color alpha over put it there image the background should be on top and you can place it a little bit so translate and i will probably move it little to the left relative and a little bit up no oh, up sorry yeah and it's pretty much all you can add uh, the uh, how is it called uh, vignetation uh, vignette effect uh, it's just again the lens distortion but uh, not the alpha channel the image distorted to max uh, converter math greater than zero greater than zero uh, filter blur fast caution and something really big and color multiply mix multiply with this and factor again smaller is better well and this is final image don't forget to save it and it's all for this time so thanks for watching and till the next tutorial bye